I would like to begin with the passage of Scripture out of Matthew, Matthew 22, verses 35 through 40. And it reads, One of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him. Teacher, which is the great commandment of the law? And Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. And second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commands depend the whole of the law and the prophets. Brethren, did you hear what Jesus said? Loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and your neighbor as yourself is the whole of the old law. Wow! That must mean that love's a pretty important thing. You know, it, it's just too bad that it's, that word love is so misused and abused. It really is. It's sad. Because it's used so often that you and I use it often. And I think we become desensitized by the use of that word in understanding the true intent and word that love is supposed to mean to us. You know, <clears throat> and I'm guilty of this too, so uh, preaching to myself. I love bacon cheeseburgers. I, <laughs> uh, I love movies. I love to go to Disney. How about you this morning? What does the word love mean to you? Do you love football? Do you love baseball? Do you love shopping? Do you love golf? You know, it's not wrong to really like these things, and even to love, I guess. I'd like to relate a story to you from my youth. My hero was Johnny Unitas, and I know I just dated myself. It was only a few people in this room that probably even know who Johnny Unitas was. But he was a great NFL quarterback. I wanted to be the next Johnny Unitas. And so I practiced. Every day I practiced. I threw football hundreds of times every week because I was practicing to become the next Johnny Unitas. I would throw that football across my yard into a bucket. I would throw that football at a tire swing that was swinging. I even got to the point where I would practice throwing the football without looking where I was throwing it. So I could look off those individuals that were defending a receiver. I loved football. And because I loved football so much, I practiced it every day. Let me ask you again, what was the meaning then when Jesus said, you are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself? Brethren, do we practice that? Do we practice that like I practiced? Do I practice like I practiced to be the next Johnny Unitas? I'd like you to consider this little statement. It doesn't come from the Word of God, but I believe it's a truism. Love can only be known by the action that it prompts in us. Love can only be identified by the action that it prompts 
in you and me. When we read Matthew 22, 35 through 40, what action should it prompt in us? Let me ask you another, that same question a different way. What action does it prompt in us? If we turn over to John, the Gospel of John, chapter 14, Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep the commandments. We practice, practice actively every day keeping his commandments. First John 1 John 1.6 tells us, If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. See, God expects us to practice being Christians each and every day of our lives. He expects us to practice the truth. 1 John 3.10 says, by this, the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God. Neither he who does not love his brother. Those are strong words, my brethren. And we really need to take them to heart. Love can only be known by the action that it prompts in us. If we truly love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and our neighbor as ourself, what action should we be seeing in our daily lives? <clears throat> The scripture reading for this morning is one of my favorites. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. What, what did Jesus mean? I, I thought from Deuteronomy forward, we were told that we were supposed to be loving God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and to love our neighbors as ours. How can this be a new commandment? What, what's new about it? I don't see anything new about it. The new about it is when Jesus says, even as I have loved you. <clears throat> you know, I'm going to violate my little love thing again and say, you know, there are 18 passages of Scripture, well, actually more, that talk about loving one another, and the and I call them the one another scriptures because in all of these they um, use the term one another. <clears throat> Romans fifteen seven says, "Accept one another." Ephesians four two says, <clears throat> "Forbear one another." Colossians three says, "Forgive one another." Thus, 1 Thessalonians 4.18 says, comfort one another. Hebrews 3.19 says, we're to exhort one another. 10.24 of Hebrews says, consider one another. 1 Peter 3.8 um, says, we are to have compassion for one another. 1 Peter 4.10 says, we are... <clears throat> to minister to one another. Galatians 6.12 says, we are to bear one another's burdens. Brothers and sisters, <clears throat> these one another passages of scripture are a roadmap, a roadmap for you and me as to how we can love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. That's how we can accomplish what Jesus asked us to do. 
by following these one another passages of scripture. I'd like us to consider <clears throat> uh, some uh, comments that Paul makes to the Philippian church in uh, Philippians 2, verses 3 and 4. Here, Paul says, Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit. But with humility of mind, consider one another more important than yourselves. And do not merely look out for your own interests, but also for the interests of others. That's something we can practice every day. Every day. Denying self. You know, denying self is one of the most difficult things we will ever do. Because you know what? We love ourselves. We think, we think we're pretty, pretty good people. We love ourselves. And so when God asks us to love our neighbor as ourself, do we get the picture? Probably the most powerful part of this passage of Scripture <clears throat> is Philippians 2, 5 through 8, and it reads, Have this attitude in yourselves, which also was in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but rather he emptied himself, taking on the form of a bondservant and being made in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Jesus denied himself. Brothers and sisters, I ask you to consider who was in heaven being praised and glorified from microsecond to microsecond by angelic beings, those same angelic beings that if we were to see, we would fall down to worship them because they are so great and magnificent. That same kind of angelic being came down and killed one angel, killed 185,000 Assyrians in one night to support Hezekiah. <laughs> They are powerful, mighty, great, and glorious beings, but they are nothing compared to the Lord Jesus Christ, whom they worship microsecond to microsecond. And yet, Jesus denied himself and the glory that was rightfully him. He spoke. A trillion galaxies came into existence, assisted, consisted of billions of stars in each one of those galaxies. And yet, he left heaven. He created a, a body to, for him to inhabit, to come to this earth and to live for over 30 years a righteous life as an example to us to take that body and offer it as the Lamb of God to take away your sins and my sins. I can't think of a more perfect example of denying self for the benefit of someone else. And brethren, we are asked Paul tells us that we are to have that attitude in us. You and I, we're to have that attitude of sacrifice, of denying self so that we can be of service to others. We are told that in humility of mind, we are to consider one another 
as more important than ourselves. The truest form of love is denying self to the betterment of someone else. Husbands, Ephesians 5 says, love your wife. Love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. You know, <clears throat> men love to talk of heroism and what they would do in a given situation. My wife knows that I love her. She knows that I love her because I would die for her. Brethren, how much opportunity do you really think that you would have to die for your wife? I mean, it'd be glorious and wonderful, I suppose, to show that kind of sacrificial <laughs> attitude. But you know what's more important? What's more important to God and what's more important to your wife is that you live, you live each and every day for her. That demonstrates your love. Love can only be identified by the action that it prompts in us. Wives, you didn't escape. You are told that you should submit to your husband and to respect him. Ladies, <clears throat> I admire my wife because I have made a number of knucklehead decisions in my life, and they've affected her. But she has always submitted and respected me in spite of it. You may with us, not heads, but God asks you nonetheless to submit and respect. Young people, you ain't getting away. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 and 3 tells us that children are to obey their parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your, your father and your mother, because it's the first commandment with a promise. Children, that's how you can demonstrate love for your parents, when you respect them, when you obey them, when you honor them. And as you do, God will be glorified. Love can only be known by the action that it prompts in us. Living for others is the truest form and truest demonstration of how we love. When we deny our selfish desires and consider others more important than ourselves, we are demonstrating the attitude of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that should awe us. That is something we should want to practice each and every day of our lives, to be like the Lord Jesus Christ. When we practice these one another passages of Scripture of honoring and comforting and accepting and forbearing and bearing one another's burdens, we are demonstrating our love. Because love can only be identified by the action that it prompts. The other thing that we sh show, my brethren, is that we are being transformed. When we act in this way, remember what uh, Romans 12 says, that we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. When we live this way, we are demonstrating that we have been transformed and we are continuing to transform our lives rather than being conformed to this world. It's hard when everybody is heading one direction 
downstream, and we are asked to head upstream against the current and against everyone else, it is a difficult and challenging thing to do. But it is what we are called to do, you and I. When we do, we are living Jesus's new commandment. The new commandment I give you, that you love one another even as I have loved you, that you love one another. And perhaps the most important part of that passage of Scripture is verse 35. By this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Brethren, you and I are challenged. We are commanded not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And we are asked to do that <clears throat> so that you and I will be uh, recognized as the disciples of Christ that he intended us to be. Love can only be known from the action that it prompts in us. My brethren, this lesson has not been one to teach the elementary principles of the gospel or to teach you the gospel plan of salvation. But if you know that you need to believe, if you know that you need to confess Jesus as Lord in your life, if you know you need to repent of your sins, if you know that you need to be baptized, we're here. Each one of us is ready and willing to help you to obey that gospel plan of salvation this morning. If your need is different, if that need is that you've struggled because you are challenged by staying away from being conformed to this world and the lusts and the sins of this world and the desires of this world, and you are struggling, the one another passages of Scripture say we are to pray for one another. If that's your need, you can come forward and we can pray for you and ourselves to be stronger, more viable Christian soldiers in the future.